Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So thanks for having me. Thanks for Hill for a warm introduction. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Miles. I'm the founder and CEO of Final Labs. Uh, we are actually a, a Hong Kong-based company doing rec tech and wealth tech technologies, primarily in the financial space. And a little background about us. So we actually used to be a research lab in Hong Kong University. We spun it off in 2015, and we you know, become a, we run, decided to spin off our technologies and run as a commercial company. And here's my co-founder and chairman, Professor Victor Lee. He's also my, my PhD advisor and my, my dear mentor. Uh, so what we do is actually in Final Labs, we're primarily working on, on language AI. So, you know, it's kind of a language part of artificial intelligence where we primarily analyze human voices. So in, in, in basically, so what we do is actually you give me an audio file and we get machines to tell you inside the audio, how many different speakers are there? Who are they? Where did they, did they overlap each other? If they overlap each other, if they, it means somebody, some people talk at the same time. We try to separate their voices and reconstruct their original voices. And at every instance in the audio, we try to tell you what language was the per people speaking, what, they, what kind of language they use. Did they change the language on the fly? And then turn everything they said into the corresponding language, and we run further analysis and tell you what's really going on inside the audio. So what, who said what? And what was the person's intention? Was it emotional or was it kind of a nervous? or was a sentimental issue in there. And from there, when we, when we analyze data in large volumes, we turn everything from these audio archives into different business insights to serve different purposes. And that's what we do. And we've been running the company slightly over seven years. And then you know, right now we've been employing over, um, you know, 45, uh, over 70 full-time employees. And we're working with more than 50 large enterprises and government bodies. So, and technology-wise, I just mentioned that. But what's so special about us, actually, oh, it's a little lag. So what's, what's so special about us is actually when we try to run our, comp, uh, when the, what, try to deploy technologies in Hong Kong and, it's, and many parts of Asia, is actually people speak multiple languages. So when people, speak, when people are multilingual, there's a tendency for people to mix and match and sometimes they win switch. And then if you put up your cell phone, I right, try to use the, the things like Siri. Typically, if you, you, have, you have to pre-select a language, because you pre-select Cantonese, you try to say Chinese, sorry, you try to say Mandarin, doesn't work. You try to you pre-select Mandarin and try to say English, doesn't work, right? That's the, because the fundamental technology that we, that was the, the fundamental assumption that we used to build the technology about two decades ago was we have to know the language that people speak. And of course, technology was first developed in monolingual countries where people predominantly speak one language. So this kind of mix and match scenario was never formally considered. And of course, another thing is that when it comes to consumer market, like when consumer applications, consumers will adapt to the way you design the technology, right? If you knew that your Siri would not work when you, if you try to say a different language than what you configured, you would try to be monolingual as possible, right? But when, for most of the use cases that we have to deal with, we are processing human to human conversations and people will say whatever that they, they're more comfortable. So here's a quick demo about how our technology works when it comes to multilingual scenario. Let's check it out. We are very impressive and really interested in uh, knowing more and obviously collaborating further. I'm sure that would bring a lot of success with our clients. So the speaker was one of our partners, a senior partner of our our you know, our partner consulting firm. He was testing our system. Now, obviously, this is from someone from Hong Kong. Start off the Cantonese, mix of English, switch to English with accent, switch to Mandarin with accent. And this is a system performance we got right, on the, right out of the box, about over 90% accuracy. Well, this person was changing languages a couple of times during the, in the middle of a conversation. So what do we do right now in the, in the real in the market? What's the real application of technology? Of course, well, when we try to commercialization, we have to talk about use cases, what's it used for, what kind of value does it bring. So here's a, a video I'm gonna show you that explains what we do right now. In banks and financial services, a lot of interactions with customers are done via phone calls and live chats. Yet, managing these unstructured and scattered data is a huge hassle, especially for sales compliance. Compliance and risk control teams often need to manually check and listen to all these call recordings. Yet these sample checks only cover a fraction of all interactions. The process is inefficient, costly, and requires a lot of manpower. Say hello to CallEnter, our AI interaction analytics system. We use language AI to monitor all interactions, transcribe the voice calls to text, and use natural language processing technology to analyze whether your team has guided the client through a bunch of required checks. CallEnter works 24-7 and 100 times faster than a human could. 
Call Enter can also analyze your customer's sentiment, their signs of interest, and other useful trends and hot topics that are useful to your business. What makes us more unique is Fano Labs' speech recognition engine that can understand when people switch and mix different languages on the fly with an over 90% accuracy rate. The future of language AI is here. Visit our website today and book your free demo. All right, this is a little bit of salesy, but that roughly tells us what we're doing right now. It's actually most of the large financial institutes, especially banks, you can think about in the, in the region are working with us right now because compliance is actually a very big topic and it's, that's where banks spend a lot of money on, and, but it's not getting them right very well. And the other thing is, well, we analyze audios for compliance purposes. We're checking on all the processes that was process uh, issues or, or kind of mis-sellings. We also work with many of our, our clients are, are in the law enforcement, you know, regulatory and in, even internal legal counsels for investigation purposes. So many cases when it comes to like, a dispute between a customer and a bank or a financial institute or any organization having a dispute, typically there's a high chance there's some part of the litigation involves a customer claiming that, hey, you told me this, but it's not true, all right? Many of the cases goes like that. So that's why organizations typically have an archive of, of the, most of the conversation that happening between a customer and an organization. When it comes for dispute resolution or litigation, the kind of investigations, they have to do internal investigations to find out what was happening before. What did we tell the customer precisely, right? But going through this uh, audio archive, trying to find precisely what something happened, it was, it was kind of painful and it's very slow. And of course, when it comes to you know looking this kind of, doing this kind of uh, investigations, you're involving paralegals or legals that are very very expensive. So you're wasting, you spend lots of money for it, but it's not really helpful. So what we do is actually we you know after we most of our clients deploy our systems, we actually provide a tool for the internal legal counsels or even external legal counsels. So when it's time for them to do investigations like that, we just empower them to do a simple search. So they can search by keywords, they can search by different kind of intents, they can even search by voice prints. Let's say, I wanna know when did Miles contact my organization. If you have a way to acquire my voice, like 20 seconds of my voice, I can tell you inside your archive, did this, this my voice appear in any of the audios? If yes, where did, I, where did I appear? So, and of course, when it comes to, you know, after we do that, you know, everything will be exported. And this one will probably go to the court. Sometimes even it's, it's sometimes set off the court. Sometimes this actually goes to the court for you know for litigation. And of course, you know, in addition to this uh, doing the reg regulation compliance and all that, we also do lots of more general customer service enhancement kind of applications. So our business, business biggest clients actually by far is actually Cathay Pacific Airways. So we just recently did a press release with them about a couple of months, a couple of months ago. So basically the entire, you know, most of the thing we do is actually quite similar to what this, uh, this conversational AI is about. It's actually, we're using AI to automate many of the customer service part. And of course, I mean, I, I know many of you guys might still be complaining about this AI, you know, kind of a service by Cathay, but we're actually, we're doing our best to try to enhance all the time. But the other part about AI is also like, well, we want to be is, as human, as interactive as possible. We also need to bear in mind that sometimes we, we need to make sure the machine is explainable, right? Sometimes we need to make sure the behavior is also controlled, right? So sometimes the, we need to find a right balance between controlled AI and the real, very conversational intelligent AI. That's something that we're still exploring. But uh, we're actually helping Cathay doing lots of analysis in terms of, you know, on the back end, we analyze every, every time you make a phone call to Cathay, there's a chance our software will be analyzing the conversation to find out where are the complaints and what are the things that they might improve in terms of services. And of course, when it comes to like real life front end operations, we also directly give responses when the AI feel that this one, the AI feel confident to give a proper and uh, explainable and justifiable answer directly. And of course, the other case we do is also we work with the China Mobile, which we also published. Uh, we have, we went to the press together a couple of years ago. Uh, we, we have, what we help them is actually we help them do a churn analysis. We help them find out which customers caught them, which, are th which who threatened to leave, all right, due to bad services or what, whatsoever. We help them run that analysis so that we can alert their internal colleagues to take for, uh, earlier action. So we call the customer back, try to figure out, do, uh, do remediations so that customer do not leave. And if the, th the thing about retention is very important because most, for most organizations, if you lose a customer, it probably will cost you like a couple of, you know, much more money to get the customer back. Uh, I'm gonna wrap it up. So we got lots of awards. Uh, I, I couldn't show a client's logo, but we've, you know, most of the large organizations we're thinking, thinking about in, in town are probably working with us. With that, I'm gonna wrap up. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wen. May I invite our session moderator, Professor Long, to host the Q&A session. Thanks very much, uh, Miles. 
Uh, in light of the time, um, we have only time for one question, and after this, we have to go to panel discussion. Uh, any burning questions that you may have? Please, Alan. I'm so interested uh, on the um, English and the Chinese, because English, there are so many different accents, and in Chinese, even more accent <laughs> than the English. Tell so I'm quite that. interested how your AI system can 100% de detect and identify or translate correctly. Oh, thank you, that's a good one. So first of all, we cannot do 100% accuracy. That's not, it's, that's not, it's not possible. And then like, uh, we did actually did some study, like human, like the per human parity, which is like uh, getting a professional transcriber or translator in there. The professionals typically give you like 94% accuracy, for not 94 to 96. So we try to be as close as human as possible, but we cannot beat humans at the moment. So there's always a, a slight error. But when it comes to how do we handle the, the wide spectrum of dialects, you know, and, and accents in Chinese and English and all that, uh, there are two, couple, two parts. Um, one part is actually on data. So when, when a machine sees, you know, because the machine has a very good memory, right? So we train large amount of, uh, get lots of data just from different accents and then feed in the machine. If a machine recognized before, you rem re remember it. So we built all those accents, the information into the machine's memory. So right next time when they come across it, he will, will be able to process it. And the other part is, of course, on algorithm improvement, of course, because when, 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 we, when we look at, when you need to process 10 accents, kind of easy, 100 accents become a little harder, but when we look at like 1,000 different accents, this one has become a challenge even for machines because we still need the machine to run efficiently and also kind of a, do not, you know, I mean, in a way that we do not require a quantum computer to run it, right? So lots of time we have to do different kind of compressions and new architectures and you know, new new algorithms to make things run faster and smaller so that it actually runs in a cost-effective way. So that's lots of small details in, in, to making it happen. Okay, thanks very much, Maz. Um,